Hey, how's it going there, folks? Welcome back here to a Friday night. It is the Earthmaster out here, April 19th, 2024. It's about 1039 here in the PM, California time. 1.2 earthquake, the latest there into, uh, looks like Nevada or potentially down there in Southern California. We'll check this out here in just a little bit. Earlier uh, this evening, earlier today, actually, we did see a decent G3 class storm. Very strong magnetic storm, unexpected, uh, and that was due to a B, the BZ component there of the interplanetary magnetic field, which was pointing south, allowing a lot of the solar wind stream to flow in and create the aurora conditions earlier. Unfortunately, it looks like that has since died down here. Notice that the KP index has dropped, and uh, earlier though, look at that, that was way up there on the KP index of 7, a G3 class storm. Again, things much calmer right now as we speak. I uh, don't expect that to kick back up through the night, uh, unfortunately. But hopefully, we'll get uh, some more CMEs in the forecast. Uh, the SFI, the index here, quite high. The sunspot number as well, 243. Things are picking up out here on the sun. Once again, we're looking at quite a bit of complexity here within this complex of sunspots. A giant area of... Uh, Quite a few different sunspots out here, and they're currently facing the Earth. Uh, there's a few other out here, a uh, few other sunspots out here on the Earth-facing side of the Sun, but nothing like what's going on here, center disk directly facing the Earth. We'll watch that for some stronger flaring. Right now, there is a 99% chance for C flare, M flare 75% chance, and X flare around 20% chance. So things are still. Uh, quite active in the flare department. I know it's not showing that here on the uh, over the last 24 24 hours. Mostly we've seen C flare activity, really nothing big. But there's always that possibility here of seeing some stronger flaring with the way those sunspots are looking. And here's the visible disk. Uh, again, quite the large active area out here. One of the more larger areas I've seen in quite a while. All right, so let's see what we got for earthquake activity out here. Let's key this back up. And uh, Washington had a little earthquake activity earlier this evening. It looks like they downgraded that to a 2.8. Originally a 3.0, just outside the Rich, uh, Richland, Washington area, uh, well east of the Cascade Range. Don't really see too much earthquake activity out here occasionally. And uh, aside from that, a handful of smaller microquakes there across the uh, volcanoes. Uh, Mount St. Helens and the Mount Rainier area of Washington. Across California, a handful of earthquakes shaken up around the Bay Area. Really nothing big, but uh, noticing a broad region here around the San Francisco Bay Area showing some earthquake activity. Getting uh, a decent swarm over here. Uh, across the, um, oh, what's this fault system called? The Fish Lake Valley Fault. It does look like it's um, an extensional fault of the Death Valley Fault Zone, which runs uh, obviously towards the Death Valley area further down south. Uh, that's a pretty decent swarm of activity out here, about 17 earthquakes, quite a few here in the last hour. Also another separate swarm going on here northwest of Las Vegas. Um, and all this activity comes following uh, the uh, earthquake activity here in the last couple days around California. Let's go back and check out the last seven days. And, of course, we did have some decent activity out here around the Bodfish area with a 4.3 and uh, a handful of other earthquakes around the Coso Volcanic Range. Remember that? That was prior to the 4.3. So all this activity stirring up out here. We're getting further swarms inland here today, uh, further away from the plate boundary. Still tells me... That this area, obviously, we know it's quite strained, but uh, we're looking at an increasing um, pressure out here across the Southern California region and inland, uh, more specifically, right now. So, uh, obviously, look at that. We got two, three different swarms a swarm around the Ridgecrest area, and it uh, looks like the Coso Junction area, the, the uh, Coso Volcanic Range, still seeing some activity as well. So, things are lighting up out here. That's the time to be on guard out here in Southern California. One earthquake on the Brawley Seismic Zone, and it looks like there was another one here. Uh, 1.4 earlier this afternoon, a little bit closer, uh, but away from the plate or the uh, the uh, Brawley Seismic Zone. 
And of course, up here, you got the San Andreas Fault. That's the southern branch. And that thing is, uh, it's been sleeping for quite a while. Eventually, it's going to wake up. And with all this earthquake activity happening within the vicinity of it, you know, it makes one, makes someone wonder, could, uh, you know, things be lighting up here soon across the area of Southern California? And that's a good possibility. I think anytime we see any type of swarming in the region here, it's good to be on guard. There's plenty of other faults out here that are well overdue as well. And uh, just got to, you know, be prepared out there. That's, uh, you know, look at this. One, two, three, three different swarms. And if we start seeing a swarm up here or down here, uh, it would definitely be an eye opener. So we'll watch this overnight, see how things play out, but uh, some decent activity. Now, those are very small earthquakes, right? Below 2.5, but there's still a swarm. And that tells me right there that things are on the increase out here across the California region. All right, further out and about, a handful of smaller quakes here across the Yellowstone area earlier. Let's pull up the uh, Yellowstone map. And I already see those earthquakes. It's going to be these over here, a couple of them. Just got hiccups all of a sudden. Goodness. Uh, a couple more here in the last few hours across the area of Maple Creek, but really not a whole lot going on out here uh, in Yellowstone National Park. It's been pretty quiet. And uh, it's been a little while since we've seen any major earthquakes swarming out here. <clears throat> All right, further out and about uh, across the rest of the states, a little bit of activity out in the New Madrid Seismic Zone. That's going to be a, a 1.4 from earlier this morning up here in New Jersey. Of course, this is where the 4.8 struck and a, cu a couple other earthquakes in this area. Now, this is the last 24 hours. Looks like things are kind of picking up out here. Uh, they were calming back down, but we got about five earthquakes now um, in the area where that four-pointer struck here a couple weeks back. So we'll continue to watch that. Also some activity down here in the uh, Lincoln Park area of Pennsylvania, 2.4 this afternoon. Quite a few fault systems run through here. Looks like things are starting to increase out here across the North American plate. And uh, we'll, we'll definitely watch that. Things are quite active out here today. Puerto Rico, fairly quiet aside from the typical typical movement down here in the uh, southwestern edge of Puerto Rico. Uh, let's check out the earthquake 3D globe, see what's going on. Yeah, 2.3. I'm not for sure why it clicked on that. All right, uh, for the rest of the globe, man, look at this deep, super deep earthquake there in the Mariana Trench. Goodness. That's probably going to fire up uh, some pressure out there for sure in the region. That's uh, almost 500 kilometers deep for a five-pointer. Now, um, areas to watch, obviously, if you look at this plate boundary, when we see deeper activity in that region, it normally strains the area upstream here. That's a major subduction zone area. And uh, very possible we could see some further movement upstream from this area. I'm talking about roughly around this region right here. They do get some pretty large earthquakes. Uh, 4.5 coming in right now, it looks like. Um, well, that shows about uh, about an hour or so ago. Not for sure why it's showing up right now. I try to keep the most recent one, but it, it keeps flipping back and forth here between the EMSC and the, the USGS, but uh, we'll just let it do its thing there. Um, so continue to watch this area around the uh, Mariana Trench. Definitely some deep activity. Clustering going on here once again, south of the Philippines and into the Java Trench area. As uh, far as our seismic gap zone here, that remains uh, fairly quiet. I know we did see a 5.7 earlier this morning in this region right here in the Vanuatu area. Uh, well, well, it looks like it uh, <coughs> south of uh, the Vanuatu area. Uh, 5.7 in this area early this morning. Aside from that, it doesn't look like we've seen anything here, even on the Earthquake 3D globe showing up in this uh, seismic gap zone. So we still got to watch that area specifically for some further large-scale movement, uh, some older quake activity there around New Zealand. And um, 
it's just a it's a very active day out here definitely looks like things are in motion uh, for some larger scale potential here some movement across the uh, Himalaya areas around Nepal Mediterranean region seeing a handful of smaller quakes out there as well there's that 5.2 in the Atlantic from earlier let's see South America and the middle America trench here always active quite a few threes and twos and uh, we'll just kind of watch this see how it plays out overnight got a lot going on out there in the west coast and uh, you know it's hard to uh, it's hard to miss right kind of lighten up more specifically in this area and it, it does play back and forth here occasionally we'll see uh, activity stir up here in northern California and then things would go quiet up here and then start picking up here in the southern part of the state and uh, that's what's going on right now one two three different swarms here four maybe if you're counting this area down here across Ridgecrest that's a uh, a lot of activity I would say and then not just confined to one specific fault it's multiple different faults so obviously strain uh, quite high there all right uh, see what else we got here across the area of the earthquake 3d globe 3.3 uh, down in the uh, South Africa area it looks like nothing big for now goodness yeah all right so space weather we already checked that expect uh, you know some possible stronger flaring from some of those sunspots out there definitely quite active here we didn't get a chance to check out the asteroid approaches this morning uh, now this is from today uh, date of April 19th I always try to check them in the morning uh, we'll have to do that tomorrow for uh, tomorrow's five close approaches from the uh, JPL nasa.gov website here really not uh, all that big of a deal as far as close approaches with these today there was a 15 foot car size asteroid came within about 198,000 miles today but uh, aside from that everything else is at a considerable distance out here all right storm prediction center really nothing in the forecast for now in terms of severe weather there's going to be a quite the rainmaker out there in the uh, Texas area this weekend but the storm prediction center here is hinting at some severe weather on the seventh the day seven that's going to be Thursday and the Friday of next week. Uh, potential severe weather outbreak out here across a good portion of Kansas, Oklahoma, and northern Texas as well. This could get upgraded here to a 30% chance soon. But uh, they're definitely hinting at it. And uh, let's take a look and see what we got here for Thursday and Friday. So <clears throat> this is the current weekend. Look at Texas. going to get a lot of moisture out there. That's good, though. They need the rain. So as we head into next week here, Wednesday into Thursday, there's a low pressure system right here over the um, uh, Wyoming area, southeastern Wyoming, going to be pulling up some uh, moisture from the Gulf. And we'll put this into motion here and see what's going on Thursday into Friday. It does look like, you know, this type of specific setup here and the dynamics of that low uh, could stir up some uh, severe potential. Uh, Thursday into Friday so we'll keep an eye on that and then of course that uh, extends to the east as we head further to the weekend but uh, an overall pattern looks to be quite active out here um, as we head it even into uh, next next week just a lot of uh, a lot of stuff going on oh goodness what we got going on out there in the west coast towards May 5th or so look at that a decent storm we don't see that out here in May that's quite rare uh, but uh, we'll take it because it's keeping the hot weather at bay uh, we hit about 85 degrees out here today in the uh, Chico California area tomorrow's supposed to be about the same maybe a little bit warmer um, so that's not bad definitely not bad uh, let's check out the accumulated precipitation out here from a couple of these runs and this goes well not all the way but uh, this covers at least uh, 222 hours out 
And uh, there's some of that rain coming into Texas this weekend. That's a GFS, the ECMWF model, showing a little bit more across this area this weekend. But uh, either way, you know, it's, it's good news for those guys. They definitely need the rain down there. I was out there in Texas last year, and they had a uh, quite a bit of dry weather out there and uh, quite a few low lakes out there in that area. Hopefully they can fill those up and get out of any drought that was uh, in there. There's a... Uh, Kind of looks like a low uh, frontal boundary out here. Let me see what that is. Yeah, there's a uh, low pressure with a cold front out here. I was wondering what was going on with the uh, that wind out here. Very weak system. That's really not going to affect the weather too much here tomorrow. But uh, look at look how active everything is across the planet. There is quite a bit of activity stirring up out here in, in terms of disturbances and low pressures. This looks more like... Uh, I don't know, January, February, but uh, got a lot going on out here. Tropics are going to be heating up pretty soon, and that could make for a very interesting hurricane season out here in the Atlantic. Definitely keep an eye on that, that's for sure. Okay, so rain accumulation, just on this one I want to check here. Um, rain, rain accumulation, there we go. Next 10 days or so. From the ECMWF model, there's all that rain out in Texas, around Dallas, Texas or so. This model is probably a little aggressive, but uh, they're stating around four and a half inches of rain. Uh, most of that's probably going to fall, um, well, over the next 10 days, it looks like. Uh, this week and a couple inches. So either way, this is going to include some of those storm systems as we head into uh, next week as well. Crazy. All right. Well, I'm going to jump off here, folks. Uh, we'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later tomorrow. It is, uh, you know, it's Friday night. Stay safe out there. And a whole lot of crazy stuff going on out in the world right now. I try to keep my TV off and just watch uh, YouTube and videos that I watch. But uh, it's there's a lot of crazy stuff in the world right now. Keep an eye on California, folks. We'll see how it goes overnight. Seismograph stations right now. Uh, fairly calm, not a whole lot going on. Take care. We'll catch you guys back out here in the morning.